If you love a good RPG or two, or 25, this is definitely the video for you. I dived through GameStop's website, Wikipedia, and a ton of other places looking for every RPG I could find coming this year in 2019 for the Nintendo Switch. The good ones, mind you. I didn't bother with any of the ones that didn't look, well, good. And that doesn't mean I didn't miss one, so if there's an RPG you're really looking forward to that you know is coming to the Switch, leave that down below in the comment section. In saying that, most of the games on this list today are confirmed to be coming out this year, but some of them are more, like, heavily implied. Maybe they'll get pushed back, but either way, they're hopefully coming in the next year. So, with all that being said, we have a lot of games to talk about today, so how about I shut up and just get to it after a quick word from my sponsor, you guys. Thank you so much for watching these videos and supporting what I do. It means the world to me. Okay, now let's get started. Let's kick this off with a bang, shall we? When I made my last video about upcoming games on the Switch, I intentionally left out Pokemon, the main series game. I probably should have mentioned it at least once because people got really upset, but I was obviously saving it for this video as it is an RPG. I probably should have mentioned it though, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> I understand. Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu combine elements of both the traditional mainline titles and the widely popular smartphone app Pokemon Go. The changes offered a more streamlined experience for players, cutting out wild Pokemon battles and implementing touch controls. And one thing is for sure, all of those new features absolutely divided the Pokemon fanbase. You either love the new changes or you hated the new changes. Personally, I liked them. And I'm sure a lot of you that didn't pick up Eevee and Pikachu were probably saving your money and your Pokemon gameplay time for the new title, the mainline title headed to Switch this year. Generation 8 is right around the corner and I'm very interested to see what new elements Game Freak will bring to the Pokemon series. I'm sure they're gonna go big with this game, but I'm just wondering if it's gonna resemble Eevee and Pikachu in some way or if it's gonna be its own huge brand new adventure. Personally, I'd like to see that. I want new I want fresh, I want exciting. In fact, speaking of Pokemon, how about we talk about Town? The Pokemon developer Game Freak is dropping a new Nintendo Switch exclusive this year. The game, called Town, is non-surprisingly about a town of villagers who, after years of peace, must defend their home turf from invading monsters. But the monsters in this game aren't cutesy little Pikachu looking things, rather they actually are big and formidable looking. I was gonna say scary, not, not really, but they're, they're more monster looking. They're more formidable. Whether the game has an online component or if it's playable in couch co-op similar to the new Pokemon games is yet to be seen. What we do know is that the game is set to release at some point this year. Obviously, or we wouldn't be talking about it right now. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. This one still really surprises me. It was revealed during the Game Awards last December, and an even bigger surprise is that it's a Nintendo Switch exclusive this time around. And honestly, this Marvel partnership is a pretty huge deal for Nintendo, and Ultimate Alliance 3 looks to be quite an impressive title. Seeing the likes of Spider-Man and Wolverine fighting side by side is something special to behold, since that isn't something that's very common these days. At least not in video games, and definitely not in the movies, since they're all owned by different people at this point, which is stupid. Can we just get it all under one umbrella already? I'm sick of Deadpool having to dance around with the rest of the X-Men are in every one of his movies. Except that one scene in the new one, which I won't spoil, and was hilarious. As a fan of Marvel comic books and superheroes in general, and also a fan of the previous two games, I'm looking forward to playing this one on Switch, and I, it's just really cool that it's an exclusive. I'm gonna be honest, I'm sick of talking about the next one, Shin Megami Tensei. I'm, like, I, I'm so excited for it, don't get me wrong, but oh boy, this one was announced way back like when the Switch launched. Rumor is it's coming this year, so let's talk about it. One more time, I suppose. You know them, you love them. The popular JRPG developer Atlas is heading back to the Megami Tensei series with Shin Megami Tensei 5 on Nintendo Switch. That's a mouthful to say. The producer of the game has stated that Shin Megami Tensei, I know I don't pronounce it exactly right. Every time I, every time I do this, there's someone that spells it out for me down below. Shin Megami, Gemi, Shin, Shin Megami, Megami Tensei. It's something, it's, it's, it's close, okay? It's probably better than what most people get, so leave me alone. 
but I am sorry that <laughs> I don't get it right. This game takes place in the modern day Tokyo and is meant to sympathize with the current times and challenges in modern society, which doesn't surprise me to hear because I'm pretty sure Persona 5 was made with the same mindset. The game will combine elements of Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne and the demon raising feature of Shin Megami Tensei 4. I'm not saying the name of the game again, but it's supposedly still in development right now. However, it's rumored to come out this year. Will that actually happen? I, I guess we'll see. Here's a game that is for sure coming out this year though, and that's Remy Law. If you had a ton of fun with Diablo 3 on your Switch, but you kept thinking the whole time, dang, I wish this barbarian was actually a super cute anime girl. Well, you're in luck. <laughs> This game is described as a roguelike anime style adventure where you'll be hacking and slashing your way through a variety of monsters and environments on your quest to find your way back home from the magical world of Ragnarok. Like any good rogue style game, procedural levels and a huge variety of loot help keep the game fresh no matter how many runs you make. You've got two playable characters and each can be kitted out with a variety of costumes and a custom set of weapons and magical abilities. If you need some backup, you can even call a friend thanks to the two player co-op feature. We haven't seen much on this game yet, but I've been following it for a while and I think it will be a surprise hit for 2019. Probably one of the most recently announced games to become in a Switch, Capcom's Dragon's Dogma. And this game honestly has to be one of the most interesting games Capcom has ever made. Released back in 2012, this is an open world action action RPG set in a dark high fantasy medieval world. If you've ever read the Berserk manga series, we'll take that and put it into an open world setting and now you have a pretty solid picture of Dragon's Dogma. The combat is one of the big things that makes Dragon's Dogma stand out from other games. As a melee class, you can cling to giant creatures and crawl around them Shadows of Colossus style to strike at their weak points. And as a magic user, you can conjure an insane variety of unique and breathtaking spells that are a league above the standard fireballs and thunder Thunderbolts of other games. Dragon's Dogma is absolutely an RPG masterpiece. At least that's what I was told by all of my friends that were playing it back in 2012. I haven't played it before, but they wouldn't shut up about it. So I'm looking forward to my first time on Switch. When I say I'm addicted to a game, people often question how addicted I actually am. Well, let me tell you, I squeeze Dragon Quest Builders dry of all the fun I could possibly have with it, and I am very much awaiting the sequel so I can get addicted all over again. Dragon Quest Builders brought the Minecraft style crafting exploration into the colorful world of the iconic Dragon Quest series. Builders 2 aims to be bigger and better, adding a ton of sweet new features and improvements. Building limits and material types have been expanded to allow for even more creativity and you can customize the look of your character even more than you could in the first game. The story is even expanded further too, bringing new insights into the world of Dragon Quest 2. There's even multiplayer for up to four players so you can craft and create with your friends. It seriously seems like Dragon Quest Builders 2 has gone above and beyond the first game. Like, I was happy with the first one. I would have gladly played that first game again just with some new materials, items, and storyline, but they just decided to go ahead and make it twice as awesome with all these new features. Hopefully that means it'll be twice as addicting. <laughs> Time will tell, but I mean, I'm pretty sure. A game I knew nothing about before this video, and I still know very little about it, Lapis X Labyrinth. This game is the kind of game that Uncle Scrooge would freaking love. It's a side-scrolling action RPG where you combine character attacks and string together combos to rack up big points and even bigger rewards. Each of the eight playable classes have different abilities, equipments, and weapons to use, and you can stack your four party members on top of each other to combine their abilities for huge results. And I just love the bright and adorable art style that this entire game is rendered in. If you're a fan of Disgaea but want less of the tactics experience and more real-time action, Lapis X Labyrinth is worth checking out. And if you forget the name of the game, like I probably will, make sure to come back to this part of the video. So we have time for all the Final Fantasies coming to Switch this year? I think we do. Let's power through them as quick as possible. I think there's like 10. Well, there is 10. Final Fantasy 10. But I meant like 10 as in the amount of... Never mind. Let's start with Final Fantasy 7 and Final Fantasy 9. There are a lot of classic Final Fantasy games coming to the Switch in 2019, but these two are arguably arguably my favorites. Final Fantasy VII is the first 3D entry in the long-running franchise and one of the most influential JRPGs Ever. Meanwhile, Final Fantasy IX is actually my favorite. I have a huge soft spot for this game. I played it when I was young, and I honestly think it's 
the best Final Fantasy, and severely overlooked because everyone only ever talks about 7. But I'm not salty, and 7 is really good, so I'm not complaining. <laughs> and then we have Final Fantasy 10 and 10 2. If you wanted to play these games portably before now, your only other option was the Vita, and while that's a pretty good option, the Switch is definitely gonna look better and play better. And finally, Final Fantasy 12 Zodiac Age. Final Fantasy 12 has all the depth and content of an MMO, but contained in a single player RPG experience. It's the perfect game to play in long bursts or even short sessions, so it should find a decent home on the Switch. I don't know how I missed this announcement, but Yokai Watch 4 is headed to the Switch this year. Yokai Watch rose and then quickly fell in popularity, but the upcoming Nintendo Switch sequel looks like it's doing a lot of big things that might just revitalize the franchise. While the previous three mainline games were Pokemon style turn based RPGs, Yokai Watch 4 is opting for real time action combat that looks really similar to what you might find in the Nino Kuni series. But hardcore fans of Yokai Watch will still get a kick out of the story too, as it aims to bring together the protagonists and the worlds of the three separate Yokai Watch universes together in one massive franchise crossover. It's also all rendered in gorgeous crisp 3D, and that easily outdoes the graphics of any 3DS entry. Previously to now, the Yokai Watch games have been seen as primarily kids' games, and while I actually liked them and had a lot of fun with them, yeah, they kind of are kids' games, but this new entry in the series looks like it's really trying to expand its demographic and become more of a cross-generational hit. I'm actually pretty excited for this game and I'm really hoping that it does well. A game I know a lot of you are excited for, Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest Echoes of an Elusive Age took American audiences by storm in 2018. It was the first home console release of a main Dragon Quest game since 2004 and it was packed full of love. The modern visuals and addictive RPG mechanics combined with the classic Dragon Quest monsters and music was a recipe for nostalgic success. The upcoming Switch release isn't just a port of this memorable RPG hit though, it aims to add full voice acting to the story as well as brand new story content exclusive to the Nintendo Switch release. So the Nintendo Switch Master Race, that's right, you and me, us guys, all of us watching this, we get treated to the exclusive, definitive, and ultimate version of Dragon Quest later this year in 2019. Next up, we have another surprise to the system and that's Vampire. The minds behind Life is Strange and Remember Me have crafted a dark and gloomy video game about a doctor who's been afflicted with vampirism. It's equal parts narrative heavy dialogue decisions and action RPG combat, but both parts come together to create a truly unique experience. I actually played this on PlayStation 4 and enjoyed it, but I didn't get that far and now I'm kind of glad that I didn't. I can play it on Switch. Fate Extella Link is the next one. You can't take more than five steps in the video game industry without landing in a Dynasty Warriors spin-off. Fate Extella is one such game, slapping horde battling gameplay onto the ever-growing Fate multimedia franchise. Extella Link picks up right where the first game left off and packs in a heap of new gameplay features. Ten new playable servants join the 16 from the original game. There's also a new base camp you can walk around and explore in between missions where you'll be able to chat with your servants and get to know them a little better. On top of all all of that, a new 4 vs 4 online multiplayer mode makes the package even heftier. This type of game is always mindless fun. You can turn the TV on and watch something in the background while you slash away at enemies. It's perfect for the Switch and I can't wait. A game I've been excited for for a while and even talked about recently, RPG Maker is coming to Switch. Here's what I said about it. RPG Maker MV isn't actually a role-playing game. Instead, it's a set of tools that let you create your very own RPG. This game lets you create your own game without all the tedious and infuriating coding of traditional game development. A game I couldn't pronounce the first time I talked about it, and I still can't pronounce it now, Kalgulia. Effect Overdose. An enhanced port of the previously exclusive PlayStation Vita game. It's an Atlas published RPG that features a story wrote by the same guy who wrote Persona, Persona 2 Innocent Sin and Persona 2 Eternal Punishment. Grandia 1 and 2 Remaster finally releases this year. Grandia's 2D sprites on a 3D overworld just never seems to age and it still looks incredible today. I'm very eager to see how this game looks in HD. Unfortunately, there is no gameplay for these updated versions yet. Remember when I talked about the Princess Guide? Well, that game is still on the way. Thankfully, it's closer now than ever. Let's take a look at it one more time. The Princess Guide tells a unique story of four princess knights. In this RPG, you'll make choices that affect how the story unfolds. You'll get different outcomes in all four campaigns based on how you treat the princesses. 
This feature will ensure tons of replay value if you want to witness every possible ending for each campaign. Last time I talked about Super Neptunia, a lot of you guys told me you were really excited for this game. This game features a beautiful 2D art style that's pure eye candy. I'm getting some serious Vanillaware vibes from the animation style, which is a fantastic thing. In this turn-based RPG, you explore gorgeously painted interactive dungeons. The game is heavily inspired by classic turn-based JRPGs and is even self-aware of that with gaming culture jokes aplenty. Next, we have Langrissa 1 and 2. Langrissa is a tactical role-playing series that features beautiful top-down 16-bit gameplay and large-scale battles that let you control over 30 characters on the battlefield. These remakes will have new character designs, updated mechanics, and more. And for those that watch my Kickstarter games coming to the Switch, you might remember Monster Sanctuary and Hazelnut Bastille, of course, still coming to the Switch, and if you want to learn more about them, I'll leave my video on them down below. Why repeat myself? Apart from Pokemon, I've saved my favorite two until last, starting with Fire Emblem Three Houses. The popular tactical turn-based RPG series is back with its first entry on Nintendo's home console in over a decade. Fire Emblem Three Houses introduces fans to a brand new world. As a new addition to the series, players can now also move entire units of troops to aid in the battle. As always, players must strategize in every battle and build relationships with the people around them in an ever-evolving storyline. Yeah, I am super excited for this one. We really don't know much about it other than that, and that's a fantastic thing. I have saved the absolute best for last, the one that I am for sure most excited about, even though... Technically, we don't know for sure if it's coming this year or even what it's going to be, <laughs> but a new Zelda game. <laughs> if you only watch my channel on YouTube to start with, wow, thank you so much. You probably haven't heard about this, so let me fill you in. I'm not saying that Breath of the Wild 2 is right around the corner. I'm not crazy. However, that doesn't mean Nintendo has nothing up their sleeve this year for the Zelda franchise. I don't know if you guys saw this, but late last year, the internet blew up. YouTube specifically, because Nintendo put out job listings to work on a new legendary port for the Switch. I, I kind of hope that means we're getting a Skyward Sword port. I know a lot of you don't love Skyward Sword the same way I do. It's not one of my favorite Zeldas, but it's still Zelda and I enjoyed it. I would like to see it get the remastered treatment that we've seen Twilight Princess and Wind Waker get, where they modified, changed, and improved some parts of the game that were kind of slow and boring. I can think of a lot of things in Skyward Sword they could modify and actually make it a much more enjoyable experience, but for the most part, I just want to play that Zelda game again in HD. However, it might not be Skyward Sword. It could be a port of any Zelda game. Maybe it's another remaster of Ocarina of Time, like the 3DS version, but maybe even better, like Breath of the Wild graphics? Wouldn't that just blow your mind? Who knows, but barely a year goes by where we don't get some kind of Zelda port or Zelda spin-off title or something with Zelda in it. So I would say it's safe to get excited for Zelda of some kind this year. We just don't know what or when. And that's what I've got for you guys. That's all the great RPGs I could find online that were coming this year in one big video. But did I miss any? Let me know down below. Click or tap on this video right here because it actually really does support my channel if you stay on it and keep watching my videos. Big shocker, right? YouTube doesn't like you leaving your channel. Or not. I don't care. You guys do you. Live your best life. I love you anyway. Again, thanks to my sponsor, you guys. I really appreciate it. You're seriously the best. Go play some Switch. Have fun with your favorite RPG. I'm out of here.